Music Central TV. Um, I'm joined by Ray Oliver. Now, Ray, thanks for joining us. Now, My you, pleasure. Please. Now, you're a part of the Pink Floyd Beyond the Dark Side yes. tour. Now, um, Pink Floyd have sold over 200 million albums. They have sold out stadium tours. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What's it like? Being the second biggest pink Floyd. What's it like? Oh, well, shoes it's, it's, to fill. In a way, I can't yeah, but um, uh, uh, us as, as, as being uh, you know just as good uh, musicians as those guys. Yeah. It, it's it's just the fact that we, you know, come from a different part of part of part of the world where there's not so many opportunities, I guess. And yeah. So so, you, so I don't regard myself as being any less of a player than than David Gilmore or. I just don't. So, yeah. so, so uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about Beyond the Dark Side. Beyond the Dark Side has been going for about twenty years. Uh, created by my nephew Kevin Hunt, slowly built it up over the years to the point now where, where you know there's a two million dollar light show and, and, and an eighty five thousand watt surround system, and, it, and, and he he owns all the production. So it's almost like what Pink Floyd actually do in their shows. Basically, it is, yeah. Because that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got some spectacular shows. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a masterpiece of technological brilliance, is what is actually actually done there. Yeah, well, the standards yeah. are high. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so what towns and cities has Beyond the Duck Side taken you to? I've done two two tours. I, I did a North Queensland regional tour. Where, yeah. Where we where we did Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, Gladstone, um, Gold Coast. Yeah, and um, Mary Maryborough. That was that was my first tour, but the uh, the uh, bigger tour was the one we've just finished, which was uh, Auckland, Wellington, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, Sydney, oh, the big cities. and Melbourne. Yeah, <coughs> we just we just finished the uh, Melbourne uh, gig, which was the last one of the tour. The last oh, okay. About a week ago. Oh, okay, so yeah. you're, you're just back. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, more or what, less. Would, what would be your favourite Pink Floyd album? The uh, Pulse album. For me, that's a, that's my favourite, but I, I guess, you know, other people might think differently. But yeah. That's fine. So what, what um, when you're in the actual concert, what songs get the biggest crowd response? Usually the ones they know the most. Yeah. You know, like like, uh, like brick in the wall. You know, wish you were wish you were here. Yeah, that's a good one. Run, run like hell. Yeah, Comfort, that's a good one. Comfortably numb, those kind of I those. should have asked this at the ah, start. Yeah. What's your role in the concert? Well, I play second, I actually play second guitar, so I don't yeah. actually play all the David Gilmore lines. That's, ah, yeah. that's, that's Kevin, Kevin's role. Yeah. Um, and he does it pretty pretty well. I play, I play second guitar, so I play a lot of the I play a lot of the rhythm parts. I play a lot of, a lot of acoustic well, Let's talk about your experience yeah. Yeah. while you touched up on that. Um, where did it all start for you? Like, started for me. Uh, my father was a jazz musician. Yeah. We lived in the UK. I started playing when I was at school. I was about ten or eleven. Ah, okay. And um, we were in a few bands in the the UK before uh, we sort of emigrated here. Ah, okay then. In about nineteen sixty-seven, sixty-eight. And uh, you know, Brisbane wasn't the place that. It is now in uh, no. 1968, but however, ha Brisbane had a, had a very good underground blues sort of music scene here. Okay, well, and you at tapped that, into at that, that time, yeah, because it was it was all a throw off from the uh, from what was happening in the UK at the time, because the UK had a pretty strong British blues influence there. Ah, okay then. Yeah, you had bands like uh, you know, Cream. Yep. Um, John Mayall. And uh, a lot of the guys that were playing at the time were, were playing that stuff. Well, even Jimi Hendrix went yes, to London to kickstart his yeah, career. Yeah. So, in a way, I, I probably came out of the biggest music scene in the world to, to sort of something that was probably, you know, 15 years behind. Yeah. yeah. So that was a bit of a culture shock. Yeah. For me. <clears throat> but, um, you know. I got into it. I, I, I played in a, in, a, in a few bands here. Um, I ended up playing in a band called The Light, which was at the... Uh, we used to play at a, a little club opposite Centenary Park. Ah, oh, okay. Um, in, in the city there called The Red Orb. 
Ah, oh, okay then. You, you may not have heard of that. But, no. But, uh, might be a bit young. <laughs> might, be, might be going back before your time. But, yeah. So, and that was the done thing in those days. I, uh, one would um, not go to you know, Melbourne if you wanted to progress. Yeah. So in those days. Uh, I met up with some uh, a few guys here from uh, the, the, uh, the legendary Australian blues band Chain. Okay. Yeah, Phil Manning and Matt Taylor. Do you know those guys? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Can't, can't expect you young blokes to know. Yeah, no doubt. Um, <laughs> I and, um, them after. I ended up playing in uh, with some with some very good musicians down there, like like you know sort of, that are that are big name music musicians, and you know a few of them have died. Uh, okay. But some are some are still going. I, I played with a band called King Harvest. Yeah. And uh, back off friends, both of which had uh, hit singles on the charts. Okay. Then. Yeah. And later I played with a band called Black Feather, which had actually had a number one single here. Oh, called, really? Called Bopping the Blues. Yeah, yeah, I think I know that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably would have. Yeah, that, yeah. that was about 72, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that one. I'm... Yeah, and. Um, and then I sort of, uh, I came back up here. I've, I've been to Melbourne a couple of times, but I came back yeah. once and, and, uh, and, and then I went back again. Um, I've played in all, I've played all sorts of music. I've played everything from country, country yeah. rock. Uh, I've played funk. Yeah. Um, and uh, in recent times I've played, played a lot of jazz and, um, in, um, in big bands. Oh, really? Community big bands, actually. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, so we just did a gig Saturday. In the, like, you know, 20, 20 piece man. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. It's funny how I, I sort of, my, my father was a jazz player and he always wanted me to, Following you know, you know come, and, come and play jazz for sort of, sort of thing, but, you know, I was, I, I, I didn't want to know, basic, basically. <laughs> but, uh, was it true that your dad... Later on, I got, I got into it. Yeah. Was it true that your father was involved when they first did the first recording? Was it in the UK? Uh, he was involved? He uh, he played in the Royal Marines band. Yeah. And uh, fortunately for him, because it actually got him out of, out of the, the front lines of the oh, fighting. And he ended, he was up, he ended, he ended up... He ended up... music. And um, he... Uh, he he did record, but as he said, in those days, they they didn't really know how to record um, some things, particularly bass and drums. So so yeah. he, he said they used to stick him in a corner, surrounded with sandbags. <laughs> Same for the drummer, and the and the, the whole band used to play around one one microphone. Oh really? And the and the and the record would would be cut directly to this. Oh, okay. So it would be you'd be cutting the grooves on the on the on the disc. It'd be like a metal disc. So this is how the first record. That's, were that's how they produced. that's that's how they used to used to record a lot of the a lot of the early big bands. Oh, okay. That's why when you listen to those, I mean, the, the recordings aren't the, aren't that great, and the, and they have to be like remixed or remastered to oh. bring out certain, certain things in because they they didn't have the they didn't have the mics or the the technology. Ah, oh, okay. But. Um, He's got a whole bunch of semi he to play now. It's a real. Yeah. He still he's, he still plays with me occasionally. He, he yeah. Lives in Beenley, he is. He plays double bass. Plays double. Yeah, I oh, see yeah. that very often. Yeah. Now, well, he's been playing since 1939. He, he says. Uh, he'd have some stories to tell. <laughs> he probably <laughs> would. Do you get to hear him a lot? <laughs> oh, occasionally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, um, back to your Pink Floyd. Um, beyond the dark side. Um, what's involved if you're in that production? Like, uh, do you have to do a lot of rehearsals, a lot of stage rehearsals? Um, How much work goes into behind the scenes? We rehearse twice a week for six months. We rehearse for six months before a, before a tour. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so you know, there's a lot of work goes in. Because I've often watched those mainly on YouTube, yeah. and the lighting is perfect to the song. Do you have to keep the songs the same in every show so that the lighting show can go with it, or do they just well, tend to? Well, 
go with the flow themselves. I guess you have to understand a little bit about the technology of how, yeah. how it runs. Um, <clears throat> it runs from basically two computers. Yeah. So there's one, um, as well as having two keyboard players, right? As I can explain to you, we, have, we also have some keyboard parts that are, are recorded because there's so many parts in, in Pink Floyd stuff. Yeah. That even with two guitars, we find it difficult to cover it, cover it, everything on even on, on the on the guitar front. So yeah. So the keyboard thing, um, one computer runs the visuals because at the back of the stage there's a, a big circle, like like Pink Pink Floyd used to have, yeah. which is, which is pro projecting movies. Obviously, that has to be synchronised. Yeah. With the lighting show and the and the music. So the video computer is linked. To the audio computer, yeah, we get it. We get. Uh, we don't use fallback wedges. Ah, okay. We get. To, we we have, we have earpieces, and we have. Everyone has a click track. Yeah. So everyone everyone knows. Ah. Where we where you are all the, all, all the time. So you get one loud beat on the first beat of the bar, and and, and then and it goes click, click, click. So you so you always know where you are. Ah, okay. Yeah. Of course, the audience don't hear that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and everybody gets it. And so, so that's so it's all synchronized together. So, so really, the show is kind of run from the computer side of it. Gee, that's amazing. And we just we just play with the click trip. Was it nerve wracking the first time you started it? Um, takes a little getting used to. Mm. But it's uh, but it's a funny thing. Um, a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, how do you, how do you do that? And I said, well, we just do it because um, after a while, the the kind of click track becomes part of the <laughs> the overall thing. It's it's kind of like you know it's there. Yeah. But uh, but you're not consciously hearing it all the time. Uh, did it take a bit of getting used to? It did at first. Yeah. Um, but uh, we we had plenty of time to you know in the rehearsal room to get the Hang of it. Ah, okay. Yeah. And not and not having fallback wedges on stage is a good thing because you you haven't got all that all that spill going yeah. into into vocal mics, which makes the mix out front very uh, uh how can I put it muddy. Ah, okay. So it cleans up the mix a lot. Ah, not as much noise. No, no, and and uh, and because it's the system's running in surround. Yeah. We've got we've got two rear stacks. Yeah. And two front stacks, so so a lot of the sounds can be actually moved around the room. Ah, oh, okay then. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, as far as the the guitar rigs go, we uh, Kevin and I both use um, two Fender Twins. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, with uh, a Roland uh, GP16, which is, which is which is fairly old machine, but yeah. It, uh, it it gives us the, gives us the sounds we want because in in a, in a Floyd show you've got to you need lots of sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um and and a lot of our effects, like delays, have to be mathematically calculated with the tempos of the song so that they so that they fit because because we use a lot of a lot of delays and they they pan across from one amp to the other so. And they go into the PA that way as well. Ah. So they all have to have to be mathematically calculated for the to the tempo of the song so that so that they all fit. Who's the poor person that has to? Um, Kevin. Head? Well, Kevin's pretty good. He's uh, he sorted all that out over a long period of time. Yeah. So 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 he's <laughs> really the only one in the in the band that knows exactly how how everything technologically works. Yeah. So he has to be on the ball every. Yeah. Every concert. Yeah, yeah. Although we do have a lighting guy who's uh, who's kind of partners in the business, but so uh, yeah, he handles the lights. So it's, for instance, on the day of a show, people think, you know, oh, you're you're in the Pink Floyd show. That that must be fantastic. Um, uh, but you know, there's a lot of work involved. We have to mm. day of a show with we're there from about you know, eleven o'clock onwards. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because part of my um, task is that I change every guitar string. 
okay. So I, I have about eight guitars. I change all the all, all the strings before a show, before every show. So so we've got that fresh, yeah, string sand at every show. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of there all day. Uh, and we usually have a sound check at about four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Show you the sounds about eight. It's a three-hour show with a twenty-minute break. Gee, that's that's yeah. a big concert. Yeah, it is. The first half is an hour and a half. Yeah. And is that just get more of hits? Is there like? Uh, well, that's uh, that's that's more of the pop stuff. Yeah. The, the stuff we've been doing. Um, of course, the next show will change. It'll be it'll be a different 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 show, but. Mm. Um, and second half of the show, we do the whole of the dark side of the moon. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you even have the sound effects for money. Oh yes, yeah. Everything's, everything's <laughs> a, all every effect that you hear on a, and every sound effect you hear on a Pink Floyd song is there. Is in the show. Yeah. Well, that's it's, that's cool. Yeah. And as I said, it runs on the audio computer. Yeah. So that's why that all has to be synchronized yeah. with the with the click track and. And the computer that's running the video. Gee, it's a big, big task. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know they've worked it. They've worked it out. I, I mean, I don't fully understand it all myself. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gradually figuring out when, how they've done it. Do you have a favourite song you like to play? Oh, for the show. What uh, for the show? Um, mm. I kind of like playing another, another brick in the wall. Probably because I get I get a good a, 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 I get a, a, a massive solo at the end of it. <laughs> Not bagging that, younger players, but some of them don't. I don't think they fully understand that to get something good together, you need to you know you, you, you need to be reliable and you, and you need to rehearse. Yeah. Some of them um, they they're more interested in the money. Yeah. But you know the money will come if you put the effort in. Yeah, well, there's good advice there for all our younger members. Yeah, just work hard at it. Yeah, you've got to be prepared to, you know, rehearse for you know very very little back for a while. Yeah. And uh, you know, eventually it will come, but you've got to stick stick <coughs> stick together. Yeah. If you if you can if you can't last beyond two two years, you've got no hope anyway. Yeah. Exactly. That's, uh, that's been my experience. And all the best bands in the world, they're the ones that worked really hard. That's right. Well, the Beatles, yeah. when they were in Germany, they played all night sets. Yeah. And they were beyond exhausted and just kept going and going and going. Yeah. Yeah, and they were the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs>